All right, it's time for Black versus Blue. <laughs> okay, hope or hype? Mr. Patrick Ewing, after 15 years of being an assistant coach all over the NBA, he finally gets his shot at Georgetown. Now, some say there was a, a seven-foot bias because, you know, a lot of the NBA coaches are point guards. But now you have him being a center, and it took him 15 years, longer than any other player on the top 50 mm -hmm. NBA player list to get a coaching job who wanted to coach. Now, is it a hit or flop at Georgetown? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, college basketball depends on is he a good recruiter. Yep. You can be a good coach if you can't get these kids in. It don't even matter. Yep. Connections, connections are everything. Are you do, are you able to understand and follow the NCAA playbook? I mean, I mean, from, <laughs> from what it seems like, he had a five minute interview anyway. Right. <laughs> I, I think that's yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's the larger issue is that the the specter of John Thompson Jr. Mm -hmm. is is lording over this program, and they fired his son. But they still want him. <laughs> they adopted him. <laughs> they right. got his adopted son. And they son. got his adopted <laughs> son. <laughs> Pretty much. Exactly. And 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 word on the street has been that that Georgetown job, the reason why they had a hard time finding a replacement is because of the specter of John Thompson and his influence. And so now you bring in a guy, great name. It's a, mm. it's, it's a throwback to the past. But, yeah, can he answer the question about recruiting? Can he answer the question about following the NCAA by rules? Can he resurrect a dead program? And, oh, by the way, Georgetown, it's a hard school to get in. So recruiting yeah. is going to be at a disadvantage already. Well, I think that if Grape Ape steps into a parent's living room. <laughs> what did gonna, you say? What? Uh, grape, Ape. grape Ape. Oh Shout out to Slug. <laughs> Mm. Um, <laughs> I, I, I thought sorry. that's what he said, Omar. <laughs> but then I was like, no, he said great Abe, great Abe. Nah, I'm, I'm talking about Patrick Schuin. Um But he, he is Mr. Hoya. But if he walks into a living room, if if he walks into a living room, I think that he he'll, he'll it'll be like the Magic Johnson effect out here in L.A. I don't know how he is as a coach. There has to be a reason why he hasn't been hired well, yet. Well, he has had one thing he has is a lot of people backing him. There are a lot of people who are singing his praises that they think he will be a great head coach. He just hasn't got the chance yet. Yeah, I'm surprised that you aren't backing him, Omar. As much as we talk about nepotism on the show, this is this is our chance. <laughs> got John, John Thompson Jr. hired his son that he couldn't name the third. I, listen, keep it in the family as long as y'all can, Georgetown. <laughs> I approve. Why would I back him? You preach nepotism. What are you talking about? <laughs> Watch the shows, Omar. Okay. <laughs> on to hit or flop. <laughs> Let's get on past that. Adrian Peterson had a meeting with the New England Patriots. Now, and them reality checks are getting really yeah. big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we know the Patriots weren't going to offer him what he wanted. Is it a hit or flop if he actually signs for less money there? And does it make the New England Patriots win will they lose or if they lose, if he goes there? Yeah, I think I think it's a it would be a hit for the Patriots if they <laughs> were to get Adrian Peterson. I think Adrian Peterson's experience in free agency has been a flop. <laughs> Dis <laughs> Dismo. Dismo is the word. Yeah. It's it's been a flop. I think um yeah, I mean, obviously, who wouldn't want to use an Adrian Peterson, especially if you're the Patriots? I mean, they, they, yeah, you're I mean stacking first of all, the their offseason has already been redonkulous. Yeah. Like, come on, man. But yeah. look, 32 years, well, 32, what, next week, I think? Yeah. Two out of the last three seasons, he's had season-ending knee injuries. The, can he stay healthy? The thing is, if he goes to the Patriots, he's, he would only be going to, to, to get to the playoffs. So he wouldn't. they wouldn't even play him that much. Exactly. Well, He'd not, be like Corey Dillon. They'd but, use the Corey Dillon. But not Dillon even let him loose. Not even that. They don't need him to get there. No, he's no, a, he's a he's a throwaway. <laughs> yeah, no, mm -hmm. it's 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 getting really interesting for Mr. Peterson. You know, this <laughs> this draft is not getting any, it's not going to get any better because after this draft, there's the a lot of good backs. Further down, the stock goes further down, and um, he's going to have to make some hard choices. I feel he needs to step out of his vacuum because yeah. obviously he's in the wrong. The people who are surrounding him are not giving him good advice. Yeah. Okay, on to newsworthy or nothing to see. Mr. Tony Romo hmm. retired today. 
<laughs> and took a broadcasting job with CBS. This story has changed over the week. <laughs> 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 now, tell me, a 37-year-old quarterback who the last two seasons hasn't been able to play because of injury, two, win, two playoff wins in the last nine seasons. It's newsworthy, but I have a question. If he played for the Chiefs, would it be newsworthy? Or is it just because Romo was a Cowboy that he is in the news? Well, that's attached to the story because it's the Cowboys. So the thing is, also, Jerry Jones, is a, he knows that a good, sto- a good uh, soap opera, brings the, bring, he likes to have the eyes. So, I mean, he could have handled this way better. Um, and I think Tom- Tony Romo called his bluff. He 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 decided to just quit instead of waiting on Jerry Jones. Really, I think it's I think I think there might be some collaboration in it. I think it's actually nothing to see because I think he's coming back. And that I was, think that was my next question. And I think I think what's happening is is you retire, they make you the cap casualty, and now what you do is you say because the stories were already out there that he could potentially be going into broadcasting. Mm-hmm. So now that he has officially signed with CBS, now his value goes up. So if you want, if you want me to come back, that number because you know the the Texans, it was reported that the Texans were interested in him, but only at a small number with the head with a lot of incentives. Mm-hmm. Now you get to drive your price point up because you already have another job. Can he get hurt in the booth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you think this is a collaboration between him and Jerry Jones? Well, I think yeah, I think Jer- I think they sat down. And I think Jerry said, "Listen, I'm going to try to trade you because I'm going to try to get something out of you, preferably from the people that you're interested in, which reported to be the Texans and the Broncos." Then when that didn't happen, Jerry says, "Listen, retire." Because you can get more money. That I, I believe the respect and the admiration is such to where they literally have been talking about this whole thing. And I do feel as if the plant, you retire, you take this other job, and now you're valued. First of all, Elway is not doing that. So now you're eliminated to one team. You think they're going to be, they're going to come up with enough to get him out of retirement. There's a lot. There's training but camp. There's a lot can happen. Exactly. Quarterback Gary. Then you're worrying about ifs. <laughs> 